Good morning, students. <clears throat> it's like I think the plateau element is the final plateau element is over. So plateau element is and uh, the classification of plateau element is. So today we we'll start another phyla that is uh, phylum Ascalmentis. Ascalmentis is also called as uh, Nimanti Hemantis. Nimanti Hemantis, or is also known as Nematodes. They are also called as the Nematodes. So, the such type of uh, <coughs> phylum Elmentis. Included in one of the grade is called as a pseudocelometa or pseudocelomes. They are referred as the pseudocelomes. Why they are referred as pseudocelomes? So, as you know, that while explaining about the basis of classification of animals. So we explained about the ceramic cavity, that is body cavity. So in the pseudocelomates are nothing but these are the animals where they are possessing the pseudocelomic cavity. The cavity is there. So this cavity is mainly formed whenever the individual possessing all the three germ layers. All the three germ layers. So here the ectoderm is present, endoderm is also present. Apart from that, so the mesoderm is present. The mesoderm is present between the ectoderm and endoderm layer. The mesoderm is present between the ectoderm and endoderm layer. That means the body wall and the endoderm layer. There is a presence of a prominent mesoderm layer. The presence of this mesoderm layer, which encloses one of the wide lumen or maybe the cavity. So this uh, a cavity is called as a coelomic cavity. So this coelomic cavity is not a true coelom. It's not a true coelom. It is a pseudo coelom. It is a false coelom cavity. Why it is called as false coelomic cavity? Because the, whatever the cavity is present due to the presence of this mesoderm between the ectoderm as well as the endoderm or maybe the body wall and the endoderm so this cavity is not lined by the coelomic epithelium on either side is not lined by the coelomic epithelium on either side of cavity on, on either side of cavity that means so outside the cavity and inside the cavity it is not lined by the coelomic epithelium layer or maybe the mesenchyma layer so that's why it is referred as a pseudocelome the such type of pseudocelomes they are mainly included the many phylums amongst these the one of the phyla the important phyla is the phylum ascalmentis the phylum ascalmentis the ascos means ascos means here it is thread like structure helminths means worms that means this phylum includes the worm like structures these worms are somewhat the thread like structures or maybe the round structure the system of the Organisms are included in phylum Ascalmentis. <clears throat> the 
No, the spiral ascalment is. <coughs> It is somewhat more evolved compared to platinum mantis. So the group of animals that is phylum. Ascalmentis, they include the organisms. These organisms are somewhat highly evolved or maybe more evolved compared to the platelmentis. So as you know that the platelmentis, these are referred as the fat worms. So these fat worms, they are mainly do not, do not enclose any cavity because the body of these individual is dorsoventrally flattened ones. The dorsoventrally flattened body is present in flat worms or in platelmentis. Because of dorsoventrally flattened the body, so the cavity is not enclosed between the body wall as well as the endoderm layer. The body wall and the gut. So there is no cavity. So this is mainly because of dorsoventrally flattened the body. Even though these individuals are also the triploblastic individuals, here also the mesoderm layer is there. But that due to the dorsoventrally compressed body, it does not enclose a cavity. So that's why these individuals are referred as ursinomates individuals. These are ursinomates. Platinum, these individuals are ursinomates, even though they are possessing the triploblastic body layer. Triploblastic layer. The, all the three gem layers are there, even though that these are these are called as a silomates because it does not enclose any silomic cavity. If the cavity is not there. If the cavity is not there, then silomic epithelial lining is also not there. So that's why so these group of images are called as platforms. These are somewhat ripper-like. These are somewhat the leaflet-like structures. The most of these uh, platelmintis individuals are uh, endoparasitic individuals. Most of the animals, most of the organisms belongs to these flat, flat worms. They are uh, the endoparasitic individuals. Only few are ectoparasitic ones. So that's why in this group of individuals, the digestive system is not highly well developed. But when we compare this platelmintis with that of the ascalmintis, the ascalmintis individual somewhat is more evolved with respect to the cavity, with respect to the digestive system, with respect to the grade of organization. So here the platelmintis, they do not exhibit the pubithelial tube body plan. But here the ascalmintis individuals, they are exhibiting the pubithelial tube body plan. The digestive system is well developed. The grade of organization is the organ grade of organization we are going to observe as in case of the Ascalmentis, sorry, the platelmentis individuals. The phylum platelmentis individuals, they are possessing only the organs. Organs are not just aggregated and they are not modified into a particular system here. But as in case of ascalmentis individuals, the organs are, the different organs, they are aggregated and they are arranged in a systematic pattern which helps in formation of one of the system. That means uh, these ascalmentis individuals, they are exhibiting organ system grade of organization. They are exhibiting organ system grade of organization. So that's why these are more evolved compared to the platinum with this group of individuals. And about the 90,000 different species of <coughs> nematodes we are going to observe. 90,000 different species of nematodes which are represented by nematodes like freshwater form individuals the freshwater form individuals uh, example is uh, Rotifers. Also includes the marine form individual. A 
example for this malum for individuals is the desmos collax and some of they are moist for individuals so example for this moist for individual is <coughs> Labridis and few of the all the parasitic individuals. So these parasitic individuals like uh, <coughs> the roundworms or pinworms or hookworms. The round worms like the the round worms like Ascaris lumbrica, Ascaris lumbrica. These are commonly called as round worms. So uh, these are also called as uh, we can call it as in Canada the Jantu Hulu in Canada. They are referred as Jantu Hulu. That is Ascaris Lum required. The common name is the round worm. So these round worms are somewhat different compared to that of the Ancylostoma duodenale. So these are different. Ancelostoma duodenale. These are different. These are uh, referred as uh, the hook, hook worms. These are referred as hook worms. Apart from that, some of the other the parasitic individuals like Uchelaria uh, bancrofti. Uchelaria. Bancrofti. So this Uchelaria bancrofti is commonly called as a Phylarian worm. It's called as Phylarian worm. So this uh, Phylarian worm, which mainly induces one of the disease in human beings or maybe in animals, it is called as elephantiasis disease, or it's also called as Phylarian disease. It's called as Elephantiasis disease or filarial disease. So these are some examples. They were the freshwater form individuals like the rotiferans, the parent form individuals like the desmos collax, moist form individuals rabbitis, and the parasitic individuals like the roundworms, pinworms, as well as hookworms. All these the animals they are mainly belongs to the phylum Ascalmethis. Now let us see the silent features of the phylum Ascalmethis. Features of the phylum Ascalmethis. These are the triploblastic animals.
pseudocelomates exhibiting tube within a tube body plan tube within a tube body plan xantoplastic organisms where all the three gem layers are there ectoderm layer mesoderm layer and endoderm layer all the three gem layers are there <coughs> And these are pseudocelomic individuals. As I said, these are enclosing the cavity, but uh, the cavity is not lined by the celomic uh, epithelial liner, lining on either side of the cavity. So that's why these are referred as pseudocelomics. And these are exhibiting the tube within a tube body plan. And these are also exhibiting the one of the grade of organization that is uh, organ system grade of organization. Organ system grid of organization that means the different organs so these are gets aggregated to form a one of the system so that system perform a particular function that is called as a organ system grid of organization the system of individuals so <clears throat> body is covered with body coverings So body is mainly covered by the epidermis layer. As in case of free form individuals, like <clears throat> rapidly form individual. Preform individuals where the body is mainly covered by the epidermis. Epidermis is thin layer, but this epidermis layer is somewhat is made up of the muscular tissue. It is mainly made up of the muscular tissue rather than this uh, the epidermis that is epithelial tissue. It is mainly lined by the, the muscular tissue. So the way is the is the possessing the muscle layer. But as in case of the, some of the other individuals like the parasitic form individuals. In parasitic form individuals, the <clears throat> body covering is epidermis only, but this epidermis is syncytial in nature. Syncytium or syncytial nature of the epidermis we are going to observe as in case of parasitic form individuals. Why this syncytium? What do you mean by this syncytial? Let us see. Syncytial, or it is also called as a syncytium, also. So, what do you mean by this is syncytium? Why is this type of syncytial epidermis is present in the parasitic form individuals? The syncytium means, first of all, what do you mean by this syncytium? The syncytium is nothing but Multinucleated cells without cell boundary. That is called syncytium or syncytial. 
Thus, whatever the cells are present here, these cells of epidermis, they are possessing the multinucleus, not a single nucleus. Usually, the single cell possesses the single nucleus. But here it is, the nucleus is more. <clears throat> more than two nucleus are present within a cell, and whatever the cell boundaries are there, so these cell boundaries are not uh, well marked. We cannot differentiate the cell boundary. Almost all the cell boundary is gets fused with the adjacent cells. So like this, uh, the syncytial nature of uh, the cell is present here in this group of individuals. Where the epidermis is made up of the syncytial. So here it is uh, like this uh, structure is there. Like this. Multinucleated cells without any cell boundary. So here cell boundary we cannot differentiate. This cell, this, this cell cell boundary and this cell cell boundary we cannot differentiate. It's almost all it is merged. And so whatever the nucleus are present within the cell, these are multinucleated ones. So that's why it's referred as a syncytium or syncytial. The epidermis of these individuals is syncytial in nature. Apart from that, so due to the presence of this syncytial nature of the uh, epidermis, even though these group of individuals, they are also exhibiting one more phenomena. That phenomena is referred as uteli phenomena. What do you mean by this uteli? Uteli means once the individual attains the puberty, once the individual attains the adult condition, the number of cells and the number of nuclei per cell is not, is not increases, not decreases. It remains constant. That is called as a uteli phenomena. So this uteli phenomena is mainly because of the presence of this essential type of epidermis. So here, yeah, uteli phenomena is nothing but once The individual attains puberty. Once the individual attains the puberty, the number of cells and the number of nuclei per cell is uh, remains constant that is called the utilic phenomena see once the individual is uh, attains the puberty once it is attains adult condition the total number of the cells within the body or the, in the body so it is, remains constant there is no increase or maybe there is decrease in the number of cells. At the same time, the whatever the nuclei are present within a single cell, so the number of nuclei per cell is also remains constant. That phenomenon is referred as a uteli phenomena. So this is one of the characteristic feature of the ascorbinthus group of individuals. <clears throat> Next. One more thing, the presence of syncytium epidermis, the whatever the suspect of syncytium epidermis is present as in case of parasitic form individuals. 
so these are the parasites where especially these are endoparasitic individuals where these are enclosed these are present within the host body the presence of this syncytial epidermis which mainly prevents the digestion of uh, these parasitic individuals uh, uh, from the uh, enzymes which are present in the host body that means whatever the enzymes are present within the host body so these enzymes they are unable to digest the body of this individual parasitic individual due to the presence of this uh, syncytial epidermis so that is the importance of uh, the syncytial epidermis present in parasitic individuals but the free living form individuals mass form individuals they do not possessing this is syncytial epidermis next the digestive system the digestive system in uh, ascomentis is a complete it is well developed it is complete the first time we are going to observe complete digestive system in this group of individuals so we cannot observe the complete well developed digestive system in platyelminthes in ciliates in tinoporans in tinoporans the only the up to some stomach part will be there complete digestive system we cannot observe but as in case of the ascomentis individuals so here the digestive system is complete and it is well developed so the way the anterior part of the body mainly possessing one of the opening is referred as mouth and the posterior part of the body which mainly encloses which mainly possessing another opening is referred as the anus the mouth is present towards the anterior surface anterior most part of the body and the anus is present towards the another end if you observe so this group of individuals where we are going to observe sexual dimorphism sexual dimorphism means there is a different sexes the sexes are separate here the sexes are separate where the male individual is differing from the female individual we are easily differentiate the male from the female individual so where the male individual all the smaller ones compared to the the female individuals the female individuals are long elongated ones whatever this is the male individual where this male individual is enclosed the anterior most part of the opening is called as the mouth so mouth is in turn covered by the lips the dorsal and ventral lips so this forms the mouth and this male individual is possessing another opening here not extremely towards the posterior end of the body not extremely towards the posterior end of the body this rough that is possessing the one of the opening is here so this opening is referred as the cloaca
This opening is referred as cloaca. The cloaca is in turn opens into the anus. The cloaca is in turn opens into the anus. So this is the male individual where the surface of the body of this male individual as well as female individual they are mainly possessing the lateral line of sense organs The lateral line of sense organs. So this is male individual. The way the male individual posterior end of the body is somewhat it is curved once. It is curved like this. It is curved like this. Posterior end of the body is curved like this. But as in case of the female individual, the female is long elongated. Compared to the male individual, the female individual is long elongated once. But the posterior end of this female individual is not uh, curved once. It is not curved. It is straight. Where it is also possessing the anterior most part of the opening is called as a mouth. The posterior end is also possessing one of the opening is referred as the anus. Here, this individual also possessing the lateral line of the sense organs. It is also possessing the lateral line of sense organs. So that is the difference between the male as well as the female individual. That is why it's called as the sexual dimorphism. That is, sexes are separate here. The male individual is separate and female individual is separate. The female individual is long elongated ones compared to the male individual. The male individual towards the posterior end, it is the body is a curved ones. It is curved ones. And the end process, one of the opening is referred as cryaka. I'm here possessing the digestive system starts from the mouth cavity and it opens into the anus or maybe a cloaca. So it is the prominent digestive system is there where the digestion is the intracellular digestion we are going to observe. It is intracellular digestion is observed. <clears throat> The skeletal structure. The body shape of this individual is maintained 
due to the presence of the pseudocylindric fluid pseudo silomic fluid this pseudo silomic fluid is mainly circulating within the pseudo silomic cavity here there are no special type of the skeletal structure here there are no special type of skeletal structure like as in case of uh, the porphyrins so the spicules are there the spicules are the endoskeletal structure of the porphyrins they mainly maintain the shape of the body but here the such type of uh, the shape of the body is not maintained by the particular the presence of the particular type of uh, a specialized type of uh, the skeletal structures so instead of that here it mainly encloses one of the cavity the cavity is called as a pseudo silomic cavity in this pseudo silomic cavity the fluid is circulating the circulating fluid is mainly maintains the pressure is mainly maintains the pressure so because of this uh, uh, circulating uh, pressure fluid pressure the body shape is maintained so that's why the skeletal system we are going to observe that is uh, the hydrostatic skeletal system hydrostatic uh, skeletal system there are other skeletal structures are absent here due to the circulating the body fluid within the pseudo silomic cavity it maintains the pressure because of this pressure it maintains the shape next respiratory system in this group of individuals the respiration is mainly brought by a simple diffusion process there are no special type of respiratory structures the respiratory structures like the trachea the respiratory structures like uh, the spiracles uh, or it might be some other uh, structures like the lungs or maybe the gills or maybe the gill slits or maybe the book lungs or such type of uh, the respiratory structures we cannot observe in this group of individuals so where the respiration is occurs by a simple diffusion process simple diffusion process the simple diffusion process is occurs across the body membrane it is it is occurs through the body surface through body surface through the body surface the gas is gets in enter into the body and uh, by passing through this uh, epidermis layer of the body it will be enter into the pseudo silomic fluid and this pseudo silomic fluid uh, carries and the transports this oxygen to the other parts of the body cells at the same time due to the metabolic activity what of the carbon dioxide is gets eliminated which is it gets eliminated through the body surface only through the simple diffusion process so such type of respiration we are going to observe as in case of both this ascalmethis individuals and the some of the individuals like the parasitic individuals so these parasitic individuals especially the endoparasitic individuals they are involving in anaerobic respiration anaerobic respiration the circulatory system is absent here though here, here there are no special type of circulatory structures the circulatory structures are totally absent here then how this the nutrients are gets transported within the body that means here the transportation of the various nutrients as well as the gases molecules and the waste material from one part of the body to the other part of the body is mainly brought by the circulating body fluid so whatever the pseudo silomic fluid is there this pseudo silomic fluid is involving in the circulation by which it mainly transports this waste material from one part of the body to the another part of the body one part of the body to another part of the body which is occurs through the body fluids so that's why here the circulatory structures are absent the highly valid or the circulatory structures are totally absent here
the excretor system. The excretor system is playing a vital role in the elimination of the nitrogenous waste material from the body. So here in Ascalmentis individuals, the excretor system is mainly brought by the presence of the longitudinal canals. Longitudinal canals. A pair of longitudinal canals are extending from one end to the another end of the body. And these longitudinal canals, they mainly carry, they mainly collect the nitrogenous waste material present with the body fluids. And these nitrogenous waste material are carried to the one of the opening which is present towards the anterior part of the body just below the mouth. Just below the mouth. Here. Here there is a presence of excretory pore. It is referred as excretory pore. This is also excretory pore. So where these longitudinal canals which are arise from the posterior end of the body towards the anterior surface and these are occurs in the form of plates and these are carried these nitrogen based material collect from the silomic fluid, pseudosilomic fluid and these are carried to, towards the excretory pore. So where the excretory pore is there, suppose this is assumed that this is the excretory pore. This is the excretory pore. So this excretory pore is mainly enclosing a one of the special type of cells called as H-shaped cells. Called as H-shaped cells. So these H-shaped cells are referred as the Rennet cells. These are referred as Rennet cells, not the flame cells. Not the solenocyte cells. The flame cells as well as solenocyte cells, these are the extractor structures of platyamenthes. These are present as in case of platyamenthes individuals. Not in ascalmenthes. Ascalmenthes, they are mainly possessing a pair of longitudinal canals, excretory canals. They are opens into the excretory pore. Where the pore is there, excretory pore is there, this excretory pore is mainly lined by the H-shaped cells. So these H-shaped cells are referred as rennet cells. That means the flame cells are absent here. Which type, which type of cells are present here? The rennet cells are present here in ascalmentis. So these cells are play a vital role in elimination of the nitrogen waste material from the body to the outside. So that is the excretory structure of the ascalmentis. The nervous system in ascalmentis. The nervous system in ascalmentis is mainly occurs due to the presence of the, <clears throat> the ring canal. This ring canal is mainly formed around the pharynx. Around the pharynx, there is a presence of the ring canal. From this ring canal, there are numerous nerves as well as nerve fibers are arises. They are in turn connect with that of the different part of the body organs or maybe body structures. That is the nervous system of the ascalmentis. So here the ring canal is present around the pharynx. So this is the pharynx. The elementary canal is, starts from the mouth and here it is the pharynx. And this is the pharynx area. So where around this pharynx area, 
The pharynx is present up to here. Around this pharynx, there is a presence of the ring canal. So from this ring canal, the numerosum, the nerves are arises, minute nerves are arises. So these nerves are in turn fused to the nerve fibers. These are connected with these are even connected with that of the different part of the body organs or maybe the organ systems. The system of the nervous system is common in the ascalmetis. Rather than this nervous system, these are also possessing, these individuals are also possessing the numerous the sensory cells, the sensory structures. So these sensory structures they are present in the form of the papillae. The papillae are nothing but these are the raised structures. Rather than this, these are also possessing some of the other types of the sensor structures like the amphids. Amphids are nothing but these are the pits. The papillae as well as amphids, these are present on the lips. These are present on the lips. The lips possessing, the lips possessing, around the mouth there is a presence of lips. The lips possessing these papillae as well as amphids. The papillae are nothing but the raised structures, the minute raised structures are arises from the surface of lips. So these are referred as the papillae. Apart from that, the lips are also possessing the pits. The pits are nothing but some of the small groove like structures. So these are referred as the pits. So these pits as well as the papillae are present on the lips. Rather than these, these are also possessing another special type of the sensor structures on throughout the surface of the body. So that is called as the phase mix. That is referred as the phase mix. So these are some more minute progressions or we are going to observe onto the surface of the body. So these are referred as placements. All these different types of sensory structures, they are playing a vital role in different function. The papillae are involving in gastronary function Gastronomy means taste receptors. Gastronomy in the sense the taste receptors. That means papillae are taste receptors. The amphids are tactile receptors. The tactile receptors are nothing but the sense of touch. Sense of touch. The face mids are chemoreceptors. The sense of chemicals. Chemical nature of the substrate, marble, so sorry, the substances. <coughs> Or uh, even though the <coughs> chemical nature of the gases molecules is going to be absorbed by the phase mates. So these are some sensory structures present in ascalmentis individuals. These are present on the tip, the lips part, the on the, on the surface of the lips. Apart from that, the throughout the body, the phase mates are there, the chemoreceptors are there. So these are uh, some sensory structures which we have observed in ascalmentis individuals. So these, these questions were asked in the NEET exam. Phase mix amphids, papillae. You know that the rendered cell also asked in the exam.
reproduction. Here the sexes are separate. They are exhibiting uh, the sexual dimorphism. They are exhibiting sexual dimorph dimorphism. The male individual are smaller than that of the female individual. And the male individual is posterior end is curved ones. Posterior end is curved ones. Where this curved portion of this posterior end of the male individual is mainly possessing one of the opening is called as a cloaca. One of the opening is called as cloaca. So this uh, through the cloaca, the one of the complete structure is arises, completely spicule, or is also called as pineal city. Complete spicule or the pineal city. Complete spicule or pineal city during the <clears throat> reproduction, the sexual intercourse here through the cloaca, complete spicule is arises by it will comes out from the cloacal opening and this. A pineal city is involved in copulation process. So here it is pineal city comes out from the cloaca. Pineal city. It comes out from the cloaca and it is involved in the sexual reproduction where the fertilization is internal. Due to the presence of the pineal city, the fertilization is occurs internally. Internal fertilization process we are going to observe. The development includes usually direct development. Usually it is direct development, but in some members of uh, this group, uh, they are involving in indirect development. This indirect development includes it includes the larval stage. It includes the larval stage. So, as in case of Ocellaria bancrofti, there is a form presence of the rabbitis form larva. The larva will enter into the or pierce into the blood vessels or maybe the capillaries and they are gets uh, enter into the blood vessels and they are extract the nutrients, they are gets modified into adult ones. And these are start to migrate from one part of the organ to the another part of the organs, and that mainly affects the lymphatic nodes of the body. So that's why there is a grass deformities of lymphatic nodes we are going to observe. So that's why the lower part of the limbs is gets a swell out. That is called as elephantiasis disease. This is mainly because of the rabbit form larva is involving in the migration. So here the larval stage we are also observing in some individuals, not in all the members of this ascalmentis. So only the few members of Ascalmentis, they are involved in indirect development that is it includes the larval stage, the larva of the Ascalmentis is referred as a rapidity form larva, rapidity form larva. But the fertilization is internal. This internal fertilization is mainly brought by the presence of the pineal city. The pineal city is one of the copulatory spicule. It is also called as copulatory spicule, which is arise from the cloaca 
and it opens up to the outside and with the help of this pineal city they are involving in the copulation process so that's why this uh, pineal city is mainly played a major role in the release of the sperm cells into the female genitalia into the female reproductive tract that is the main function of uh, this pineal city it helps in transfer of the sperm cells from male to the female individuals that is the main function of the pineal city <clears throat> that is about the general features or the sudden features of the phylum ascalmentis <clears throat> so remaining portion i will continue in tomorrow the so tomorrow we have the question bank discussion so next week we will continue the remaining portion of this theory thank you